In last week's video, I completed my second day of flying along the US-Mexico border, arriving in Del Rio, Texas. In this video, I begin the flight from Del Rio to Lejitas. This leg, however, has so much amazing scenery that I had to split it up into two videos. This is part one. Each video in this series has represented one leg, a flight from one airport to the next airport. This leg, however, is so completely and utterly off the hook that there was absolutely no way I could squeeze it into a single video, and to throw away so much utterly gorgeous and mind-blowing video footage would be an unforgivable sin. And so I've split it into two pieces, each one still quite long. I hope the length doesn't put you off and that you enjoy it as much as I did during the flight and again while doing the editing. Pressure's up. Alrighty. Strobes, nav lights. Good idea. Controls free and correct. Instruments. Alrighty. Anything else left to check? Gas that's on. That's off, but they're both full. Um, at two hours, I'll switch tanks, um, and I'm going to plan on refueling, or at least refilling. I'll probably have been on the right tank by then, uh, so I'll plan on refueling to the one tank at La Hitas. And then fuel is cheaper at Presidio, so I'll top up there. Belt's good. Ouch. Doors are good. All right. Del Rio International Airport. Automated weather observation. One two four two Zulu. Wind three zero zero at zero niner. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature two. So. In this video, I fly over the beautiful Amistad Reservoir and then take a short detour to see the Pecos River Highway Bridge. The flying continues over the Rio Grande through stunning canyons and is among the most scenic and enjoyable flying of the trip.
the Amistad Dam, or Friendship Dam, just about 11 miles upstream from Del Rio, Texas and Ciudad Acuna, Mexico, is the largest dam along the Texas-Mexico border. An earthen dam, it's more than six miles long and lies largely on the Mexican side of the border. Various treaties and organizations have been formed over the years to try and work out the complicated issues of how to share the water in this river along this shared border. And if you think issues like this are complicated only because this is an international border, remember the complicated mess of how to deal with water in places like Lake Powell and Lake Mead in the southwestern U.S. and in the Central Valley, which is entirely in the single state of California. Water can also cause huge problems when there's too much of it, such as in the big floods of 2019 along the Missouri River, which possibly could have been prevented by better management of dams and reservoirs. In recent years, it's been pretty dry here along the Rio Grande, but there have been times in the past where there's been major flooding. Cool. The power station of the Amistad Dam has four Francis turbines, the most common type of turbine, which combines aspects of both radial and axial flow. This type of turbine can achieve over 95% efficiency. These four turbines have a capacity of 132 megawatts. The concept of dams and reservoirs is brilliant. Unfortunately, water management is a complex issue with politics often entering into the equation. Dams form reservoirs, and the reservoir is generally given the same name as the dam which created it, so in this case we have the Amistad Reservoir, or Lake Amistad. The Rio Grande is the primary inflow into the lake, but Devil's River also contributes. I love the shape of lakes like this one. From a bird's eye view it looks like a fractal. It's also beautiful and a blast to fly over. If you like to fish, you'll find largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, Guadalupe bass, and catfish in the lake. Amistad Gambuja was a fish known to exist only at the local Gudanao spring and was made extinct after the dam was created and the spring flooded in 70 feet of water. As you might expect, the lake is also used for other outdoor activities such as boating, swimming, scuba diving, and water skiing. There are also good spots for camping and hunting nearby. Yep, the border's right in the middle. You can see those buoys right out there defining the border. down the center of this area. So without even looking at the GPS, I can see these buoys here and I can stay on the U.S. side. It's a mile away there, not too close, but I'll swing a little bit wide to the right here.
You may have seen the beautiful purple flowers I've been flying over since starting the trip along the U.S.-Mexico border. From what I've been able to ascertain, it's commonly referred to as Texas Sage, although it's not really sage. Other names it goes by are Texas Ranger, Texas Rain Sage, Cenizo, Texas Barometer Bush, and Wild Lilac, among others. It's added a nice little touch to the border flight. It is a hairpin at some scale, but there'll be lots of room for us to turn around, I think, here. Lots of room. Yeah, we're coming around the bottom end of it here. And it looks like some mansion here on the very southern tip of it. Over in Mexico. Someone over in Mexico has got a nice pad there. What's it say? I can't read it. Yeah, it looks really, really, really tight on the map, but when you're here, it's not as tight. It looks like someone out there this morning fishing. Someone else. Someone else over there. Well, we're getting close, I think, to where it's just a river, because the uh, map, the VFR chart doesn't make it clear at all, but it looks like we've got river right here. Human habitation in this area is estimated to have begun around 10,000 years ago. Mammoths would have also lived in the area with a denser and richer variety of vegetation supporting life. 
Much erosion is seen in the area's rock walls, and over the course of their history, the indigenous peoples carved and painted art on these walls, which is still there today. Much of this art can be enjoyed close up while in parks and on guided tours. I bet that's Border Patrol right there. Maybe, I don't know. Let's not get any closer than that, to that wall of that cliff. Boy, this is absolutely beautiful. Those of you who've been watching this series from the start may remember some places where there's just some silence. It's not easy to fill every single second with radio chatter, voiceover, or music, and so I just haven't worried about it. Personally, silence doesn't bother me. As I've been editing all the footage from this day's first leg, I've ended up keeping a lot of it. The terrain is mind-blowing, rugged, beautiful, and a total kick to fly over. I just can't bring myself not to share it with you guys, even if it's a lot. If I were to try and force it to fit into close alignment with voice and music, I'd either be rambling a bunch of nonsense until you were sick of my voice, or I'd be making you listen to a bunch of bad music, or I'd be deleting a lot of amazing video footage. Man, this is so totally awesome. Instead, I'm doing something probably no YouTuber in his right mind would do. I'm just leaving in the silence. I don't listen to music when I fly, and my headset has great active noise cancelling, so I don't really hear much of anything when I fly, and that's how I like it. Just watching this beautiful scenery in silence is probably the closest you can come to experiencing this awesome flight as I did. If this is a terrible idea, feel free to rake me over the coals in the comments. I don't have a good, long recording of the engine droning on and on, so that won't go in this video, although I might try that in the future. Oh, could you imagine living here? Wires, man. And that ball is totally missing. All right. Keep on the lookout. Lots of wires either have few or poor visibility markers. Some don't have any at all. Always be on the lookout for wires, as they can be very hard to see, especially if you're looking at the beautiful scenery out the windows. This is it. Right here on the right, the Pecos River joins the Rio Grande. Right there, there's the mighty Pecos and the mighty Rio Grande on the left there, and we'll come back there. There's the bridge. It's like a little visitor center there. and Maybe you can come down here and launch your boat down this hill here. So let's add power and climb here. Yeah, 
and not go too slow. And that must be Border Patrol right over there on that road. The Pecos River originates in northern New Mexico and comes within only a few miles of the Rio Grande near Pecos, New Mexico and Santa Fe, New Mexico. After traveling 926 miles, it empties into the Rio Grande just a few miles upstream from Lake Amistad. This is the Pecos River Bridge or Pecos River Highway Bridge. U.S. Route 90 runs across it. My friend Dave, with whom I stayed earlier on this trip up in Alamogordo, New Mexico, told me about it. He used to be stationed at Laughlin Air Force Base, back near Del Rio, and spent a lot of time kayaking and exploring on the lake. He also pointed out an old railroad tunnel, which we'll see just a little further upstream along the Rio Grande. This bridge was completed in 1957, is about 270 feet above the river, and is just over 1,300 feet across. It's the highest highway bridge in Texas, and the fourth such bridge built in this area. The three prior ones were washed away by floods in 1923, 1954, and 1955. Since all the engineers who built the bridges in 1954 and 1955 were fired, the next batch made sure to do a better job. So we're going to turn around and just do a, a flyover. Someone live in those shacks right there? I don't really like asking for money, but I've spent thousands of dollars on cameras and continue to experiment with new ones to try and capture the highest quality footage possible. I spend a lot of money on computers and hard drive space. I spend all my vacation on these trips and lots and lots of my spare time doing the editing. If you enjoy these videos and would like me to continue making and improving them, I do have a Patreon account. Links in the description. Anything you could contribute would be appreciated. The first transcontinental railroad in the United States was built between 1863 and 1869 by the Central Pacific and Union Pacific Railroad Companies and took a more northerly route through the country. The second route, completed in 1883, ran across the southern part of the country and was built by the Southern Pacific Railway Company. Part of it ran along the Rio Grande for a short distance. Here you can see the track bed, then the footing which supported a bridge. The tunnel entrance is hidden from view here and the tunnel goes for about 1,500 feet. Here, the rail bed continues. A better location for the train track would have been a few miles up the Pecos River, but the technology didn't yet exist for building the span. Less than a decade later, however, a bridge was designed and built there. Local limestone was used for the footings. Only about the time of World War II, about a half century later, was that original bridge replaced.
I haven't seen any Border Patrol around here. There's a pickup over there. That could be Border Patrol. Or it just could be a rancher. I think it's a rancher. Okay, there's some wires. Which are much more clearly marked than the other ones were.
cow. More cows. Huh. It's interesting. So the river cuts around just to the left there. Oh, wait a minute. Is this something else? Yeah, I guess. I wonder where this riverbed goes. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah, that's another river that feeds into the Rio Grande, but it's dry. Right uh, next to Stand Fast Private Airport. Which is probably just uh, up on the plateau there. Someone actually live there? We got a tiny little shack down here.
Joe's got a cow in his front yard.
Come back next week when I document the second part of this absolutely mind-blowing leg, arriving in Lajitas, Texas, after several hours of stunning flight over the Rio Grande and nail-bitingly rugged canyons.